Yeah. There we go. I got to, I got to clap for the legend when he come in here. I just accepted it too. What's going on? There. Oh. Hey, look, look, the devil thought he had me. Got y'all in here. Salute to you, fam. Yeah. What's going on with your nephew? Thank you, sis. Thank y'all for being here, King and Queen. It took us a while. We finally got y'all. Absolutely. We're glad to be here. We in the building now, man. Can't stop greatness. No, uh, sir. For the time being, uh, can you introduce yourself to the audience? I gave them a little but you know, you're the man and the woman. Um, well, ladies first. But you go first. You no, know, I got manners, baby. Go ahead and let them know. Well, what's up, everybody? I am Y Square, also Tone X's wife and manager. Uh, my business is YNS Productions. And um, my expertise are in brand management, advertising, as well as event production and content creation. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. My name is Tone X. Um, I'm a grown man. That's what you need to know before we begin. I've been doing comedy over 25 years, from Kings of Comedy to Second Cat in North Carolina to do Def Jam in 95, everything, BET a couple of times, uh, Showtime, Cinemax. Um, did a live Showtime special with Monique mm -hmm. um, that came out last year. You can go to Showtime and check that out. It's called Monique and Friends. The lineup is incredible. Uh, I do afternoon drive here in Charlotte, North Carolina on V101.9 FM. We call it Grown Man Radio. Uh, I'm an author. Just finished my first book. It's called Grown Man Tips. Um, working on some music, working on uh, a new platform with my wife, and just making it happen, man. Just making it happen. Grown man, hey, we can curse on here, so grown man shit. I like that. Oh, man, shit, baby. Bro, you, you know, you inspired me, man. That's why I had to get you on the show. I've listened to you for years. You know me and you chopped it up. I mean, I remember the first time even seeing you on TV and then meeting with you in Atlanta at the Hard Rock Cafe you got on stage. Mm -hmm. Out to my mm -hmm. and then to even go back a little further, rest in peace to my man, Mr. Spot. He used to tell me stories how y'all used to just be out there chopping it up and just freestyling all night. You know what I'm saying? So definitely, yeah. definitely got respect for you, man. That's why I, I wanted you on the show. The show is called Bridging the Gap. It's all about the Pan-African movement. My mm -hmm. thing is to connect with people around the world, especially the ones back on the continent because I don't... I, it's, it's the thing that stands in between us. They always say that if you're African, you're different. If you're a black American, you're different. And what I'm trying to tell everybody, we're all the same. You know what I'm saying? We, we all have the same background. We just happen to be on different sides of the planet. That's all it is. So that's why I made the show, I call it Bridging the Gap, just so we can take it out and just erase that line so we can all try to, you know, bring each other together. Um, I'm gonna start off with with the with the music business. I know um, you've been around the music business for for some years. Um, what advice do you have to give to the younger generation as far as like subject matter? Um, you know, cause one of one of my, my one of my problems with the music business, even though I do music, is that um, we have no variety these days. You know what I'm saying? It's like just a straight lane. It has to be thugged out. It got to be ghetto, or you, you know, you're not being accepted. So, I mean, what's, what's your thinking on that, on that right there, idea, bro? Our music is powerful, family. Yeah. It's very powerful because it's a direct connection with that frequency, yeah. that vibration, and that energy that we all have. You're right when you talk about the brothers and sisters on the continent, the brothers and sisters in the U.S. We are all connected. And so when you start talking music, it's the same connection. Mm -hmm. I think because of social media, the influence of a microwave society, the what have you done for me lately ideology, you put a lot of pressure on these kids by what they see and how they think it's supposed to go. So when they say they're going to get the bag, they go to chase the bag 
But getting the bag is like losing weight. You can go on a diet and you lose the weight, but the diet doesn't tell you how to maintain the weight loss. Then you see them a couple of months ago later, they gained about 20 pounds back. You chasing the bag, if you don't have the right team around you, well, when you get the bag, number one, it's never going to be enough. Number two, you don't have a plan on what are you going to do when you do secure the bag. Mm -hmm. So you go after what's trendy. You go after what's hot. We know these young kids' attention span is not as long as it was when we were coming up and definitely not as long as it is when we are adults. So I think a lot of times they chase like um, chase the cool, whatever's hot, the look, the sound, the lyrics. If that's what's getting in the game, if that's what's blowing up, then that's what I'm going to do. And that affects the diversity because in mainstream media, you don't have a lot of chance to hear other music, other lyrics from lesser known artists, independent artists. That's why a lot of artists go independent. That's one thing I would say. Go independent and push your own sound if you ain't trying to ride everybody else's wave. And you have to believe in what you're doing so much as to not get distracted by what mainstream is saying is hot. Right. You know, you're hot. You got that talent. You got that gift. That's what you use. You don't try to make yourself like anybody else. Don't try to be the next so-and-so. Be the first whoever you are. Because music will travel. Mm -hmm. now, same, same question, but I'm going to ask you a different way. Do you believe that a lot of the lyricism, the lyrics that's being portrayed out to the public on, on mainstream media, do you believe it's been detrimental to us as black people? You know what I'm saying? I have, I have children. So I worry about what they listen to, you know, when I'm not around. I mean, they're going to do what they do. You know, we know children. But I'm saying, like, me growing up in New York, New Jersey, you know, I used to have a variety of artists, even coming up. Even even I wasn't in that age range. I had a KRS one that was telling me you must learn. You know what I'm saying? I had people that was teaching me history lessons. Those right. are no longer being done in the music. So, Miss Yolanda, do you that these lyrics are being detrimental to our children. Gotcha. Um, I think that's a great question. And I absolutely think that they are and they, they can be detrimental to our children and to us. As, we, as Tom mentioned earlier, music is a universal language and it's a universal connection between people. And sometimes it's the lyrics that penetrate. You have people that fall out at a concert over artists. They have never met the artist before in their life. What is it that attracted them and made them believe so much in that artist? It was probably lyrics. It was probably, you know, them watching and that artist making that connection with them. Mm -hmm. And with me working with artists, um, it's important that I tell my artists, actually a group that I work with right now, King Lee and Iconic Truth Band, they actually created the theme song for Tone's Grown Man Radio uh, show, as well as for our Grown Man Conversations movement, which is called Grown Man-ish. I told them be intentional about the lyrics. Yes, it's going to be a theme song. It may be taught, thought as a jingle at first, but we want the lyrics to penetrate. Keep it to where it's grown. It's targeting the market and the demographic that you want to pull in. Because to me, music is for everybody, but certain lyrics and certain music is not for everybody. So speaking on the deformation or, or the words that could cause you know damage to us as women, yeah. Do I have I listened to WAP? Yes. Have I popped and jammed to WAP? Yes. But if I had a daughter, would I let her listen to it? Absolutely not. Do I think the lyrics are degrading? Absolutely, I do. But that's the catch twenty-two because then you get into talking with the artist and you know, do you tap into what they're doing? And it's a part of art and artistry. I think sometimes that could be a lot of bull, and that's just something politically correct to say to keep you from really digging into the root. But if you continue to put in people's minds or in girls' minds that she got a walk and that she ain't got to do nothing and she can twerk and that's how she can make money and that's how she can get married. The young girl who does not have a father or a mother who is sitting there telling her otherwise and the young girl or the young guy who doesn't have that influence of seeing a black or a relationship or a couple or a marriage or a union work and that's not what their mom is doing is twerking and, and tricking to be able to get somebody to marry her. 
then that can be influenced. You know, it can influence that child or that person to think that that's acceptable and they can do that. Definitely. So I think it's a high responsibility. I want to come behind that and say that I think that lyrics is your truth. Mm -hmm. So I didn't hustle. So my lyrics aren't going to reflect that angle, but you did. So your lyrics are going to reflect that angle. The thing when I think it becomes a gimmick is you never hustled. You went to a private school. Right. But all your lyrics got you moving way on the block, doing this. And then when we go check, it don't match up. And that's what you got to remember with social media. It's got to match up. Because anybody can go and see what's really going on behind the scenes. And in this day and age, parenting is a big deal when it comes to lyrics. You know, we pick and choose our battles. But with parenting, I'm listening to Jay-Z. I don't want my 11-year-old to listen to it. Okay? So we just change the lyrics. Now, some parents, well, you know, they use the philosophy. If you're going to hear it, you can hear it with me first. (laughs) So we both listening to Jay-Z. I think that goes with the kid, the individual, and the parents because all lyrics have an influence. All all genres of music, the Mm -hmm. lyrics have an influence. And if you want to see what you gravitate to, just check out the lyrics that you listen to or the song that comes on that hits you and you're like, oh yeah, that's my song. Well, listen to what they're talking about listen to the lyrics and that'll start telling you about yourself yeah you know and, that, and that's that's crazy that you say that so we help we all have a responsibility to our communities you know what i'm saying Wh- whichever way that we decide to help our communities um the one thing that i've been seeing is like a lot of the ogs have not been taking responsibility they've been leading some of the young kids astray you know what i'm saying again i go back to my block in brooklyn and jersey you know there was time when the ogs Set us aside, was like, yo, don't do this, youngster. Don't do that. You know, this is going to put you in jail. But now it's like a lot of the OGs that I'm seeing, I just see them like giving bad advice because they're just trying to, like you said, get that child to the bag. You know what I'm saying? If they bring the money and say they got an artist, but the artist right. is like flapping in the wind, doing all type of outlandish things, they're not really trying to straighten that young enough because they're getting money from that young. So I. <laughs> A very bad route, very bad thing that we're doing. Like, um, older people are afraid to check a young kid these days, a young adult. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're afraid the person might curse them out, shoot them, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But that wasn't the case. You know, it took a village to raise one child. Still does. Yes, it still does. So, what I mean, what do we need to do to try to get back to that? Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. It's a lot of, it's a lot of levels. To that question right there, because the OG used to take pride in being able to keep somebody whom they saw potential in, right. not going to the left. That was your thing. We keep these cats to the right because they're going to do something, mm-hmm. you know. And you used to always hear the uncle, don't be like me. Like my daddy's always telling me that. Listen, don't be like me. Whoop the whoop the whoop the whoop. Yeah. And so when you start talking about how times have changed, mm-hmm. because when you say a lot of the older generation fear the youth, they do. Mm-hmm. A lot of the younger generation doesn't respect the older generation. They don't. Mm-hmm. A lot of communication gets messed up from A to B because we don't know how to talk to each other. We don't know how to listen to each other. So a lot of OGs Watch start right. washing their hands with them and letting them go out here. Mm-hmm. What happens then is you start being life lessons. See? OG say, I used to talk to T. T wasn't listening. I knew his daddy. Daddy was just like him, but the football straightened his daddy out. I was trying to tell him he was smart. He could get in school. He didn't want to listen. Now he's doing 22 years fed time. So all y'all got can go see him, 
you know, but I hope one of you out of this bunch understand what listening can do. Because if he didn't listen, he wouldn't be in this situation. So now you start having life lessons. So now that's how you get to him. Because the youth, if they see something, they can feel it. Your man just got shot. Another funeral to go to. But then you start entwining that nephew with social media. And guess what? The ability to see someone get shot or killed in real time yeah. starts to let you pull your guard down and the empathy that you have for human life because you see it so much, it's like a video. You get desensitized from it. Yeah, myself. It's like a video. Yeah. Right now in the community, so we're seeing so many people being killed and everything that's happening, and we've been come desensitized to it. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's one of the reasons I took it upon myself to speak out more. You know what I'm saying? Because that's, that's what I really do on the, on the background of things. I talk to a lot of kids. I talk to people. People just trying to get us back on the, on, on the route where we can live as human beings. Whether you're black or you're white, even though I ride, I ride for us to the death, you know, I talk to all parts of us because I was in the military. I was exposed to all type of lifestyles, all type of different people. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm going to ride with my Africans till I die because that's, that's me. You know what I'm saying? But I think we, we have to figure out some things on how we can get back to the ways our grandparents was raising us. You know what I'm saying? I th yeah, I think for me, it starts with a mindset. Because when you're talking about it, the problem is so big. And like Tom said, there's so many different layers to it that it becomes to where it's got to be a spiritual awakening for that to happen. And that's where God comes into play. So if you believe in a higher power and you study and you believe in your God and you understand what the original purpose for mankind was, then you know that eventually it's going to stop. But what we have to do and what we can do right now, because I feel you, it's almost like, you know, like, what do we do? How do we get it back? You can only touch and reach the people that you can touch and you can reach. That's it. And you can only touch and reach the people that want to be reached. Indeed. Sometimes things happen in life. Sometimes, you know, people maybe weren't brought up in a family where they had that encouragement. But whether it's through radio, whether it's through you doing your show, like what you're doing right now, whether it's those platforms of what we do through grown man conversation, whether it's those platforms of what other people do and their clusters in their area and people attract. Truth is always going to attract truth. And when somebody realizes that they're fed up with being fed up and they want change and they want to be different in their life, they're going to make that change. And whether that's losing weight, whether that's becoming great in their career, whether that's being a better mother, a better father, whether that's to stop gang banging and to stop shooting and killing, but that's going to happen because I, I realized that the more we try to convince people, my father told me this. He says this to me. He used to say this to me as a little girl. A person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. So you can talk all day to you blue in the face and blow up and puff up and cry. And just, if they don't believe it, you're going to do the same thing. And I've learned to get off the roller coaster. Because that's what stresses me. And then that's what takes me away from being able to be a positive influence in somebody's life. There's a, um, there's a book, one of my favorite books. I keep it with me in my backpack, too. I have this book in the Quran when I go to work most of the time. And it's by Dale Carnegie. It's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. First thing he says is, do you know the only way to get someone to do something in this world, they have to want to do it. Yeah. So if they do not want to do it, they will not. Change. Only when they get to the point where they are fed up, change happens. Right. What you're doing is you're being a part of the change yeah. that you want to see. Yeah. So you're doing and doing your part, <laughs> excuse me, using your skills, using your platform to be a part of the change mm -hmm. you want to see. Indeed. A lot of people want to see a change, but don't move to be a part of the change, or they don't take it upon themselves to be that change so other people can see it. So what starts to happen is the same person that you didn't want to be, the same energy that you were trying not to attract, because you didn't move 
and be that for someone else, you start to take on the same identity of the person you didn't want to be like or the same negative energy of the energy you didn't want to be around you. The law of attraction is real. It is. It is. I was just actually, what's that, uh, the code of a cow or something? Like, I was just reading something like that. Because I, I believe manifestation is everything. What you put in your, in your mind, what you put in your mouth, what you say out loud to the universe is what you become. I, I'm a strong believer in that. And, and that, that brings me to, to this thing. Growing up, I had the 5% lessons. Okay, I studied 5%, the Quran, the Torah. I studied a lot of things because I wanted to know where I really come from. You know what I'm saying? And I would listen to people like my, like I was fascinated with Malcolm X. At nine years old, I was writing, uh, um, you know, stories about Malcolm X, turning them to class. You know what I'm saying? So I was fascinated with all of this stuff. It made me know that I was a king. You know what I'm saying? Young age, I knew I was a king. I knew that my ancestors suffered, but that wasn't their only story. You know, I knew they came from greatness. So I right. myself in that, in that form. And I think, I think my, my own opinion, I think that was missing from a lot of households because whether, you know, during the epidemic of the crack epidemic that we went through, a lot of the elders were missing, a lot of the fathers were missing, they weren't being taught. But I think if you let a kid know early in their life that you're a king, you're a queen, yeah. you that way. Your body, yeah. your mind is the temple. That's making, yeah. you know, he made you in his image. You can make very, lot, everything happen in your life by manifesting it because you're God. Yeah. Let them believe that and know that, which is a fact. You know, know let them know that you were the first one on this planet. You will be the last. Understand that. Your life means something. Your yeah. life is just a little blimp on this, on this whole scale that we call life. You know what I'm saying? Make the best of it so you leave a legacy. You know mm -hmm. you going out, that's not doing anything. That don't make you a man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We've been selling them something else. So that, that's just my spiel on that. Yeah, yeah. They buy into what they see. Indeed. They buy into what they see. That's why image, imaging is so big. Television, the most dangerous mass, uh, weapon of mass destruction on the face of the planet is the TV. Right. Not no bomb that somebody going to yeah. drop or no nuclear war. Television, yeah. tell lie vision because you sit there and watch it and it tell lies to your vision. Mm -hmm. So when here you go, real quick, more than sixty five percent of all commercials on television that has a black man mm -hmm. interracially shaped. They have a Caucasian female on a commercial. Less than fifteen percent of all commercials have a black woman with a black man. Out of them fifteen percent, less than six percent show a positive image. So if my 11-year-old is constantly watching TV, mm -hmm. he see these relationships, what is he taking away from those images? If you want to be in a relationship, get married, you go get your Caucasian woman. These black women, they're going to stress you out or you could get lucky like a scratch off and win your million and you only paid $5, but everybody don't do that. That's like the mega millions. Okay. That's what you get from it. So that's why I say what they see that's what they become. And like you said, that's when the parenting, like when you know you're a king, you have to constantly tell them that and nurture that so they can understand that. Which is what I was going to say. One of the things that, because like you said, when you are a parent, if, if you have a chance to engage with other children, then of course you can do that. But if they're not getting that at home, they may not hear that every day. But where we can do our part is like you say, talking to your kid. Since my children were born, I have two sons, two kings. One that's 22 years old, one that's 11. They've always known that they were a king. They've always known that they were very special. They've always known that their genitals were special. I get the women out here. We got the breasts and we got the booty and we got this right here. But you know what? No, your stuff is just as special as hers. You know what I mean? Sure is. You don't need to put your stuff up in hers. Look at your dad. she ain't deserving of it. You know what I mean? And so I've always been like that. But the reason why is because my parents told me 
I was special. My father told me at a young age, and I went through being uh, molested by certain family members and people when I was young, like starting at three years old, that I didn't even, even verbalize to my father, that he didn't even know. But at the same time, some of those things that were going on, my daddy was telling me, Yolanda, you're special. Whatever Yolanda wants, Yolanda gets. You can manifest. You can create your destiny because my father came from nothing. So for me, I'm thankful for that gift of conversation and for that gift of you know motivation and feeling like I am somebody, even when the times that I felt crazy or I feel low. I've never been so low to the point to where... I didn't think that I could get up. And I know we all have our moments and we're all imperfect and we all go down through there, but I'm thankful. And I find out too, when you encourage other people, you start encourage, you end up encouraging yourself. Mm -hmm. So even if it's nothing, even if you can't find light within yourself, if you can look in somebody else and find light within them, and even if it's that child saying how beautiful and how great you are and go out here and do it, that will eventually start penetrating into your psyche. And those words and those things, you'll start believing them. And I know that's what happened with me. That's what I do. And I try to make sure my kids believe, no, you the best. You the bomb. You're platinum. You cut from a different cloth. And I truly appreciate the transparency on that, Pharrell. Thank you for being so transparent with everything you just said. So I know one big thing that we deal with in this country, and, and it's worldwide, but Precisely in this country itself, I've traveled. I've traveled all of, mostly all over the world, okay. And I know you guys travel a lot as well. Mm -hmm. How are you treated because of your skin tone? How are you treated when you go elsewhere? Like, say you went to Italy. How how, how do you feel you you're treated because of your your skin color? I <laughs> well, you want to go first? Oh, I lived in Germany for two years. When you used to go to Germany, the first thing they would tell you is, it's called the black man's paradise. Yeah, All you got to do is come out of your room and yeah. walk down the sidewalk. And you will soon understand yeah. that whatever they have been projecting about you, on you, for you, and by you in the United States is not what they are projecting over here. What do they know that we don't know? So you start going into the museums. Mm -hmm. Now, you go in a Catholic church and they got a black saint on the wall no, and, like Madonna. and Madonna, yes. the Madonna is dark. You say, okay. You go in the museums. The Saint Christopher, he dark. This saint, he dark. These paintings, he dark. But everything over here, you, I wish I would find a Catholic church in the United States where I could walk up in there and see the black Madonna yeah. holding a black baby. I'd cash out them right there on the spot. But when you go over, when you go outside the United States, you understand that the world and its thinking is bigger than the United States. It's bigger than your city. It's bigger than your state. It's bigger than your block. I went to Turkey, mm. okay, and found out that this melanin Woo, baby. causes a problem with the Turks. It's a hot commodity. And they will fight you <laughs> if they see you talking to their women. What do they know that we don't know? I went to Switzerland. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 just to interject for a minute. Did you go in some of the so-called churches in Turkey? They used to be mosques. And you see the the black figures on the thing for the wall and the ceiling, like the Sistine Chapel. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You go to Switzerland, you know what's in Switzerland. Tall, blonde, Amazons. That's what's in Switzerland. But when you go, they're more interested in who yeah, you are. Exactly. Okay, what do they know that we what is it about the black man? that illuminates right. when you step outside of the United States. When you get that passport stamp, what is it that they know that either this country know, and not only that, we ourselves exactly. don't know. And if we do know, we don't practice that kind of energy. So you get treated a little better, and then certain places where you go, oh yeah, they look at black men like, uh, it's just like over here. Certain places in England, you think he was right back in the United States. You know, but overall, 
it's a whole different vibe. Yeah, yeah and that's, that's what I was going to say. I feel like <laughs> we are a commodity and over there and over here. And to be honest with you, I have never personally experienced like blatant racism, meaning you came up in my face, oh, you're a nigger or somebody, you know, I'm just saying, oh, wow. in my face to that. I got a story yeah. after this. I have to that level or someone, and I feel like a lot of times within that, like Tom was saying, it's your energy. Mm -hmm. Have I I've experienced systemic racism? Absolutely. Meaning there were people in place that knew that I was trying to move a certain way or do certain things, and because they was in that place, no, absolutely. But you ain't got no control over systemic racism. Right. And I've been an entrepreneur all my life. So I've always conditioned my mind that you're not going to stop my hustle. And even if you tell me no over here, I know how to get my yes. And I'm going to continue to grind until I get my yes. But that's just my skin. That's just my makeup. And that comes from how I was brought up and how I was taught. But I feel like the reason why we deal with so much racism is because of our energy and our presence and what we bring. And when you know who you are, that don't affect you. You can walk into a room of white folks and you can walk into a room of whoever's in there and you can stand out. And people who understand that energy, they're going to get it and they're going to respond to it. And people who don't, they're not going to respond to it. Yes, because sometimes we deal with prejudice or racism or pullback more from our own community than when you walk into a room and you are in a room full of white businessmen and you cut your stuff together because then they're looking at you like, oh, who this, who this person? Who is this black person? Why don't I know them? Who, you know what I mean? Where sometimes you walk into a room with your folks and you want to be received like that and they looking at you like, uh. She thinks she all that. Oh, he thinks they all that. They ain't all that. But that's what keeps us down. What? You know what I mean? Me. I got two things. Real quick, nephew. Two things. Number one, blatant racism. I'm from the South. I was doing a comedy show in Valdosta, Georgia for the Comedy Zone back in the day. And the guy from the audience called me a nigga right on stage. And he was a cop. And there was about three or four more cops in the audience. And that was at the time where you would do the show at the same hotel you would stay. I remember that. You told me so that. I did the show, found out they were cops, got paid my money, went and packed my stuff, and eased out and drove back to North Carolina that same night. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, I tell them on stage, but um, it ain't material. You ain't felt it. Until a Caucasian call you a nigga and mean it. See how you react. Because all them talks with your boys and your girls yeah. about what you're going to do. If I wish somebody would say, well, wait till it happened to you. Right. And see what, see what you do. So that you know that is real. See, some people don't. You see it on video. You right. see it on TV. But when it come right at you yeah. and it ain't no joke, you get to see it face up yeah. and feel it. Yeah. You like, oh, and you like, it's people around here that actually feel like that about me. Yeah. Plenty. Yeah. But, and when, Plenty. And when you know that, even if you haven't heard it or when you do, you still have a sense to understand. Because if, if you're connected with, with yourself and you understand, you understand your surroundings, you can feel energy. Wow. You can get on an elevator and tell if someone's intimidated or someone's acting funny. Mm -hmm. But what I choose to do is not let that throw me off of my thing. Because you know what? If you come with that, you, you, and you might be scared of the energy that you get back from me. Yes. You see what I mean? I need to practice on not letting it get to me to that point that I come back at you like that. I need to practice the Christian-like or the God-like way of doing things, which is what, you know what I mean? We should, okay, laugh at it. But I don't let that, it doesn't tear me down. It get me hot to the point to where I don't feel stuck. Mm -hmm. I feel like, oh, okay, that's where you're going with it. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm ready to look. Let's go at it. But what I'm saying is, the truth is, when that word is said to you, yeah, no one is thinking about being Christian-like. Right. Because the person that gave it to you ain't Christ-like. Right. So you don't know your reaction. The whole point of a reactionary measure is when you've been through it. The way life works is life give you the lesson first. It whip your ass mm -hmm. and then you come back in retrospect. Hindsight is 2020 and you know how to move the next time. Life don't give you the setup. This is what's getting ready to happen to you on Saturday. 
We'll study it so you know it's not like that. Yeah. So when somebody comes and gives you that kind of energy, I wouldn't give a damn if the Pope was your daddy. <laughs> right. It's going to hit you different. Okay? i tell you what. Look at the energy Kirk Franklin's son hit him with on the telephone call. Come on now. And all of the Christians <laughs> was wrinkled out of their face up, and I can't believe it. Right. Boy, stop. stop. My mama was one of the most devout Christians. I hear my mama cuss on the phone on. all the time. If I did something and it you get cussed out. Right. Now that wasn't even the N-word from a Caucasian person. That was from your son. Yeah. And yeah. you see what happened to Kirk? And that's Kirk Franklin. Okay? But I knew Kirk, nephew, real quick. I knew Kirk was gonna cuss because when he came out with Stomp, I used to tell Yolanda, he one curse word away right now from this being a <laughs> hip hop remix. Okay? He wanted to cuss then, all right? Then I found out he had that porn addiction, and he threw the tape in the trash can, remember? But he got up that night and went back and got it. I said, I mess with Kirk. I messes with Kirk, okay? I told you a lot, of, it's a matter of time before he going to cuss somebody out. We on the countdown. 2021, we here, we here. We, and told his son he was broke raggedy ass. You understand me? And then hung up on him. In the name of Jesus. And you know what? I don't particularly agree with and you know, some people may not agree with me, but I don't agree with him getting on social media and apologizing for that. I, didn't like I feel like that is your child. And that was a conversation between you and your child. And if your child disrespected across that line and you felt that way, or however you expressed yourself. Yep. You know, now my parents have never, of course, talked to me like that. But my parents have given me some energy. My mom and daddy done gave me some energy. My parents are good Christian folks, but they done gave me that Christian energy like I wish you would. And this is not what you want to try, not what you want to do in the name of Jesus. <laughs> you know? My mama done told me so, to still sit your black ass down in that cart. Thank you. Kick me again when I push it. Kick it again. Keep your feet still. And won't apologize. And, that, and that's what it is. I that's mean, listen, what it is. That's, that's what black it is. love. That's tough love. But I think so. he may have. He apologized, I believe, because once again, the power of social media. But that's bull. Right, so, right, right. But yes, once bull. again, the power right. of social media. Yes. Kirk Franklin ain't the Kirk Franklin that work at the Walmart. Right. So Kirk Franklin's followers are different. And he's in the gospel realm. Some of the most hypocritical. Can I finish? I'm sorry. <laughs> Hypocritical people that you'll ever want to meet. So I think when you are in that light, yes, he didn't have to apologize. I would have used he it as a teaching lesson. Okay. He didn't have to apologize. Right. But you know what I he took it say? upon himself to apologize just because I'm okay. sure of it being on social media, his son decided to put it out yeah. where everybody could see it and hear it. Yeah. So he didn't have any control over that. But what he does have control over is... Come in and just saying, listen, it happened. Oh, I'm not, that's you know, a family, a personal thing. So -so. He knew not to put that out there, and he did that in spite of me. And to you all Christians and perfect Christians, I'm sure if I came and I took a camera and came to your house at one point in time, you went there on somebody. So don't hold this against me. And if you do, then we're not practicing. You know what I'm saying? The only person I need to be repentant to right now is God, my creator. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask him for my forgiveness. But if you, if I lose followers and I lose friends because I was, that, but that's just me. See, she that's, talking how, like, that's how I would have came at it. No, she talking like somebody that work at Walmart and make $13 it don't matter. an hour. Well, you hey, know hey what? nephew. It don't matter. Nephew, well, let me say this. I'm glad it don't matter. Now I know things about our marriage. Because if no. I'm worth a hundred million and I cuss my son out on Instagram and I got all these followers, I'm going to make an apology because what we won't do is let that right there mess up the money. And you know what I'm going to do? And I'm going to come back and I'm going to say that if, especially if, if Justice or London deserve that cussing out yeah. and they disrespected that father to that level because I know Tom and I know his character and who he is as a man. He's not going to go there unless you bring that up out of him. Right. You know what I mean? Now, that's a pattern. That's something different if you're talking about something that's a pattern. But if that happened, no, uh-uh. And if you leave because of it, that's, that's being real. We are all imperfect. And I think that's where that cancel culture and all that come from. God don't cancel us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So why will, and if the money did take, and I'm 100,000 followers, you left me because I was being fake or putting a facade yeah. and acting like I can't be real and have a moment, then bye. Bye, boo. I'll be
be glad I'll stick with my little 3,000 that follow me. I you know what I'm saying? Thank you. Hold on. Okay. I know we, we have so much stuff to talk about. I love the conversation we're having. I, I want them because... I'm not going to keep y'all long. I know y'all. We spent too much time on that Kirk Franklin mess. It ate up the clock, nephew. Right. I saw it. And I was trying to call it's another play. I was trying to call another play, but you That's know. Okay. I had to get it off my chest. You know how some people get the ball and don't want to pass it. Yeah, they just want to score. It. Zion over here just wanted to go to the hole. I was trying to call. I was doing all kind of I things, man. I had to get it off my chest. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going to ask y'all this last question. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was born in Sugar Hill, West Africa. Now, I'm, I'm cool with everybody. I mean, I grew up in America since I was a little baby, whatever. All right? But once they're talking to me and realize, you know, I'm from New York, Jersey, whatever, I'm cool. But once I tell them, like, my family background from Sierra Leone, everything changes. I start hearing the wise cracks, African boogie cracks, and all this stuff. And this is where the line has to be erased. That yeah. What's, what's your opinion? I mean, what, what, what is it? What, what keeps us different from each other? I know we speak different languages. We look the same because I could tell somebody, like, I'm African. They, oh, you don't look African. I'm like, how do you look African? You know what I'm saying? So something's been put in our mind. We know that. But yeah. how do we try to erase that line that we're all the same people, we're all going through the same struggle, that we're brothers and sisters, that matter of fact, if we packed up and went to Africa and started businesses like these Chinese are doing, taking over the continent, that we really have a home that belongs to us and we can make better. You know what I'm saying? That's why we're taught not to go there. Right. Yeah. I was, it, that, look, and it all boils down to when you know better, you do better. And ignorance you know what I'm saying? When you ignorant and you don't know, then that's all you have, you know what I'm saying, to go on. You, it, it's, if you just do even a little bit of research and understand Africa and understand those roots and where you came from and who we are and the energy, just really understand how magnificently we are and how we were created and taking it all the way back to your roots. You have to be ignorant not to be able to connect with that. And I think that's where that lies. And like I said, we said earlier, you can't reach everybody. You can only reach the ones and teach the ones who you can reach and teach. And with that, I can't wait to go. I've never been to Africa, but I feel like I know I'm connected with something, honey. And I'm planning, planning the trip. I'm not to interrupt. I'm going to, I'm going to Ghana in May, May 15th. Anybody's welcome to come. We still have time. I just went and I even went and got vaccinated. I didn't want the vaccine, but damn it, I did it. Okay, <laughs> got my yellow fever, everything. So I checked it off the list. But I'm going to Ghana. I'm going to shoot some videos and all that, and just get. To uh, oh, so anyone that's we need to talk. I'm gonna talk to you. We're gonna talk offline about that because we definitely want to. And we were actually planning a grown gang trip for you know those folks who are about the grown gang or just the movement who wanted to go. Um, that was another big reason why we even started our Grown TV network, which I want to be able to mention real quick before we get off. Um, we've partnered and we, you know, collaborated with a phenomenal IT genius and um, created the Grown TV network, which is a content, which is a streaming platform, but it's for content creators to be able to monetize their own content. We want to bridge that relationship with Africa. So that there's so much film and, and uh, content and shows and things that I think that would be it's so important for us to see. There's so many things over here that we're doing that I think it's important for, for them to see. And we felt like that would be a way to bridge since we haven't been able to be over there. But right now, utilizing digital, you know what I mean, technology and online and all of that. That would be a way to be able to start bridging that relationship and start merging and bridging that gap is what, what you're talking about. And these content creators are able to upload their content on the platform for free. Mm -hmm. They're able to put their pricing. They're able to, to do that. And they get 80% of their earnings. So that means if people come and it's basically like a pay-per-view type thing, you know, you pay-per-view, you pay to click. And the prices are reasonable. So you might find somebody might have a featured film up there. It might be $4. It might be $7. Or it might be a premiere. It might be $20. But that's the way we as a community can support one another. And now you know the money is going directly to this content creator. We have given away so much 
to social media and so much to these other major people for free that we feel like we got the tap dance. And if we're not on that, you know what I mean? But that's what Grown TV Network is about. It is a universal platform and a streaming platform that works through your smart TV. You can watch on TV or any mobile device. And it's a way that we as a community can grow and begin to create generational wealth, not only for our community, our families, but for content creators and people who specialize in that. There you go. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Tom, you got something to say? You had asked about the connection between Blacks here and Blacks of the continent. And I wanted to just say that it, it, it's, it's levels to that, too. It's levels to that, too. If I kept telling you that your neighbors three houses over from you were dirty and the inside of their house is dirty and they don't really talk the language and they're not intelligent and they got animals in the backyard, you would do your best not to go there until you happen to go and go see for yourself and be like, they've been lying to me all of this time to keep me from coming here. Yeah. So now, nephew, let's take the analogy that I used about black man's paradise. What do they know outside of the United States that we don't know? Now let's flip it. Mm -hmm. What does the United States know about Africa? That we don't know. Right. And they don't want us to know. Right. See, who wouldn't want to go back home? Even kids that's put up for adoption. If they start to get curious, they'll tell their adoptive parents, hey, I would like to find my mom. I would like to find my dad. Why? Because it's closure. Because you want to go back home. You want to see where you came from. Same thing with us. Who don't want to go back home? Every time I talk to somebody who went to Africa, you get off the plane, you breathe the air, it it's feels different. like you've been the here energy before. energy is different. feels like you've been there before. It's a different vibration. You've adapted to here, mm -hmm. but you've been there before because that's where everything comes out of. After slavery, did they send any of us a debriefing packet? No. No. You know how many countries in Africa, you know how many languages are spoken. You know how many different sects are in that country. So throw them all over here and let them mingle around with no true leadership, no identity. Okay? Each of them got something to say because they come from different parts. Each of them got, so put them in a room, nothing to get done. Put us in a country. Nothing to get done. done. We didn't get no debriefing. And we, we didn't get a head start. Mm -hmm. So how long it take you to gain 30 pounds? You know how long it's going to take to get them off. It ain't no overnight thing. So that's with us. That's where we are right now. If we could go back to the God mind, mm -hmm. it would be a beautiful thing. If we just knew some of the tricks, that tricknology, if we just knew that, like that, it, that, that if he's, you know, he nephew say he studied the 5% lesson. I saw Meek on here. He know about that tricknology. If, you know, knowledge, mm -hmm. know the ledge so you don't fall off. Yeah. If um, you go back and you go to Office Depot and you say, I need 50 copies of this. When they give you the box back, you're going to have 51 pages. You're going to have the 50 copies Mm -hmm. And you're going to put the original, they put it on top. When we understand that we are the original on top and everything else moving is the copies, not the other way around, we can start looking at things differently. Different. When we start getting financial literacy and really understanding that money is energy mm -hmm. and how to put it and put ourselves in a situation to win, Yes. We'll start growing when we understand how powerful words are yeah. and we stop down in ourselves and stop saying negative out of our mouth and think it's going to get better. When you can be a millionaire with $20 in the bank, yep. sir or ma'am, yep. you can, can be. because it starts here. Thoughts become actions. Yep. Actions become your movements. Your movement is your thinking. You're showing your outward from your inward. It's just so many things that if we really looked in the mirror and loved ourselves mm -hmm. and started loving people who look like us, 
yeah. and loved being around who look like us, we could start some kind of change, man, some kind of whirlwind that would catch on. Yeah. Because we are beautiful people, man. And I rem the minister says to love black people is the hardest thing to do in life because we are so temperamentic. They love you on Monday. They can't stand you on Tuesday. They want to kill you on Wednesday. Wednesday. They need you on Thursday. Thursday. They're grateful on Friday. Friday. Saturday, they don't know. Sunday, they listening to somebody else. But because you believe in your people so much and you love your people so much, you don't let that hinder yeah. your platform, her businesses, my entertainment. You keep putting out the information because yeah. information is the new currency. And you just hope somebody, somebody. catch it and start to want to make a change. Yeah. And then it catch on. Yeah. And it catches on, man. Huh, you just change is hard though. That's called knowledge born. You just knowledge born. That's what KG stands for, knowledge God. Oh, oh I like that, KG. Yeah. So yeah. I and thank you for blessing me with your presence today. I really appreciate it. I don't even want to stop this conversation. We got eight more minutes. Oh, I got my eye on the clock. We got eight. We got seven more now. How long his show? It's was. an hour it show. I already talked to him. Oh, okay. <laughs> it might have been only thirty minutes. It was we an hour to talk to him. Already, Kings already talk. Yes. Okay. It's, it's well, it looked like he getting wrapped up in the back. You better let your producer know. <laughs> they know it's seven more minutes. Yeah, it's a river. So yeah, we we good. We can ride. I know I, I got some other people coming on. But we, we can keep riding. I, I, I really love the conversation because these are the conversations we should be having amongst ourselves in the community, you know, to, to give the insight to the... To the but we're going to leave because yeah. he got other people coming on. We don't want to take but everybody. But, That's what I'm saying. but we do have, but we do have, but we do have <laughs> six and a half more minutes on this slot. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I pray that, that lives I, matter. Oh, yeah. You know, matter of fact, I need you guys to put out whatever information you want to put out because now we got an audience. You know, we, we have an African audience like on the continent. We got people checking in from South Africa, Sierra Leone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, give and that's what I want to do. I want to be able to connect with you. We can connect again, you know, offline, KG, maybe one day this week. But I want to connect with um, some of the African Can content creators. Media. So please definitely follow me at Y2 underscore Yolanda on Instagram or either Yolanda Belser on Facebook. And then please also go to GrownTVNetwork.com. GrownTVNetwork.com. Simple as that. Very, very self-explanatory. You can either subscribe and be able to support the platform, support the community, and watch the shows. And there's all types of shows. There's featured films up there. There's... um. Tone and I have a talk show, a late night talk show called Grown Man Conversations, the live taping. You'll see season one of that up there. We also have our podcast that we do, our visual podcast, that you'll get to see episodes from that. He's got a movie up there. There's several other. You've got business leaders that have content, so you can take webinars and workshops about your business. We've got yoga fitness gurus and instructors where you can get your physical fitness on. We've got cooks and chefs where you can learn how to cook, so we would love to be able to bridge a connection with some of the African chefs and people who have African cuisine. They can upload that. We can like That's what this platform is about. So we want to definitely connect with that. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I'll say. I feel like I'm taking too much time. Go ahead, tell your turn. We got four minutes left, nephew. Okay. Um, real quick, please, sir, please, ma'am, follow a grown man at Tone X Comedy at Tone X Comedy. That's T O N E X Comedy. That's Instagram and Twitter. Please follow me also. Go to Showtime. Mm -hmm. Download the app. Mm -hmm. Get the seven-day trial or the three-day trial and then watch the special and then cancel it. That's how you do it, okay? You go and watch Monique and Friends. The lineup is incredible. It's myself. It's uh, Prince T-Dub. It's uh, um, Corey B. My man Donnell Rollins from The Chappelle Show. Of course, Monique hosts it. And... Um, just niche. So make sure you check that out. Also, go to my website, tonexedutainment.com. 
Tone X Edutainment, edutainment.com. And that's where you can get you a copy of my first book. It's called Grown Man Tips, 77 Tips Broken Down into Six Sections That Affect Your Life and Something That You Can Read, Put a Smile on Your Face, Put Some Good Energy Around You. So make sure that you follow me and support and support what we do because it's not a moment. It's a movement. And I appreciate you, man, Yo. having me on the show, nephew. This has been a pleasure. I got to come back yeah. by myself. And we got to have you on. We got to have you on Grown Man Conversation. Nephew, you caught that? I got to come back by myself, too, then, nephew. Because this, this split screen ain't working. That's right. It's not. I should. It should be right, right here. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> hey, hey shout, out, shout out to Charlotte, man. Charlotte, we love you. Keep us up. Tab Dibiashi, Tab, I see you. Yeah. Million Dollar DJ. DJ. I mean, yeah. and I thank you guys for being here. I love y'all, man. Keep that. We love you too. Shout out to Africa, man. Yes. I'm coming. Been wanting to do a comedy show over there. I am coming. My man Griff used to go over there all the time. So I am coming. So shouts out to everybody that's got their eyes on us in the continents, in the yeah. countries. All right. The logo in the Congo. It's all love over here on this side. Do not get it twisted. From Come the logo on, the, with the, from the logo to, to the, the Congo. Congo baby. It's love over here. Hey. Never get that twisted, man. Yo, don't be mad if I use that in my rap. You hey, can take that. Do that. Take that. Like Puffy say, take that, take that. You got that one. You got that one, man. All right. Yo, it's good having y'all, man. I love y'all. Y'all be easy, all right? Yeah, all right, peace and blessings too. to you, family. Love.